Hello everyone and welcome to another video from uh, Nordic Anglers. My name is Daniel and today we're in Sweden. We're in Sweden to fish for rainbow trout um, in some really, really beautiful lakes. And with me, I have Håkon here, who knows this area really well and has been fishing this for a long time, right? Yeah, I've been here for well, close to 35 years now. It's a really nice area because you have 20 lakes to choose between and everyone is stocked with really nice rainbow. Yeah. So it's, it's stocked fish, but they are really uh, beautiful. They have complete tails and stuff. So, so a nice, nice fishery. And, uh, and, and I have the perfect guide today because today we're doing something completely new, at least new to me. I've never fished with the, the booby flies before, but you have. I have, yeah. It's a really good technique to have as an alternative if you don't want to use the floating line. And you can do so much with a booby and sinking line. Yeah, yeah. So today I'm learning a lot more about this technique, and it's a technique I think could be applied to a lot of different fishing situations, not only the stock rainbows. So today we're doing a full video about these booby flies and how to fish them. Today we're gonna fish with the, the six wedge, right? Yes, that's that's the standard for me when I'm fishing here. The, the line six and a nine foot, nine and a half like this one is perfect because it's sometimes bigger lakes, a bit windy, and the fish is quite big and strong in some lakes. Yeah. So, so uh, a nine feet six weight is, is the ideal. If you have a five weight, you can you can cast the flies as well on those. But yes. but a nine feet six weight for for this type of fishing is is ideal. Yes, and we have two rods here. I, I always have one with the floating line and one with the sinking line because then you can alter the fishing you want to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have the sinking line on here with the booby, and that seems really, really exciting. So, about a five or a six weight for for this this type of fishing is is perfectly suited. Yeah. This booby fishing is 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 a bit different from a lot of other fishing because the the key element and the the core element here is the fly line, right? Yes, the fly line and the fly. Uh, to do the booby fishing, you need a sinking line. I mean, that's the main thing. Yeah. Uh, and to choose the right line, uh, I would say this is my preference. This is a, a scientific angler cold sink 25, which has a floating uh, running line yeah. and a sinking um, head. And uh, that makes it easier because in, in this type of lake, I'm wading a lot. So when you have a floating running line, uh, it's easier to cast a new cast. Otherwise, if you have a full sinking line, you, you need some sort of a stripping basket. Yeah. To, to, so this is a good solution, I would say. Yeah, and it's a quite fast sinking line. Yes, right? it is. I mean, there are different types of sinking line. This fly, uh, this line has a, a sinking rate a die four, I think, which is four inches in a second. Yeah. Sinks, yeah. and that's quite fast sinking. But uh, as the the head is quite short, that's quite enough for well most of the fishing with the booby fly, I would say. Yeah. And uh, I've, I've I, you know, I've been fishing with this uh, this setup here, and I noticed you had uh, on this you had a you had a poly leader as well. Yes, because if if you don't have a poly leader, uh, my experience is that it's quite difficult to get a nice casting. It, it turn, yeah, it, it turns over very very quickly if you don't yeah. have uh, the poly leader is tapered, yeah. so you get a smoother turnover using this this poly leader. So that's that's my setup anyway. You have a poly leader, and then you have. Uh, this is uh, 0 0.18, right? So, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, something like that. So around 0 0.18, 0 0.18. Yeah, but you can also use a, a bit heavier uh, leader because you're using um, a loop yeah. knot. So then you can have, uh, I would say, 3x, uh, 0 0.21, 22, yeah. because sometimes you get really 
uh, heavy takes. Yeah, so that's fish. good. Yeah, it's good to have a heavy leader. Yeah. And the uh, and and to tie the fly in this uh, in this loop is really crucial as well. It is because it, it sets the fly free. It's, yeah. it's it's what I use all the time for coastal. For fish? Yeah. Oh. See the. Yeah, the, sorry. Uh, I I use this for all my hooked flies because it it just makes them makes them really really move uh, move a lot better. But in the especially water. when you have marabou or, or sonk or stuff like that, that will make the fly move. Then you need to set the fly free till you get the movement. So a loop knot is is uh, essential. Yeah. So the overall idea here is you have a fly that floats. Uh, due to these uh, big foam eyes, the booby eyes, and uh, and basically this fish completely different from from all other types of flies because uh, you have the line that is is down deep, and then you have a fly that floats. So every time you pull the fly, uh, the fly moves down, and then when you stop retrieving, it 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 swims back up to the surface. Yes. So it's completely opposite of what you're used to, and and that was a bit tricky for me because I was fishing uh, part of the lake here where uh, where it was quite shallow, and my fly line was laying on the bottom, and I kept thinking, oh, I'm gonna I'm gonna snag, I'm gonna snag, but I never did, you know, no. because because of this. So it also gives you the option to fish quite slow, even yes. in shallow water. Yeah, you can do that. And, and if, you, if you balance the fly with the right type of sinking line, you can actually have the fly to, to sort of hoover yeah. under the surface. And that's, that's really good if the fish is tricky or if it's really cold in the water. Yeah. So that's, that's a technique you can't use with a floating line. No, exactly, exactly. So, so there's a lot of options here. Yeah. And, uh, and of course, the, uh, you, you talked to me a little about the, the, different, the different sinking rate, of course, depends on, on how deep you want the fly to fish, yes. but also on how deep the leg is and, yes. and stuff. But it also depends on the size of the fly, right? Yes, it is. Uh, this is my ordinary size of fly. This is a um, dry fly hook size 8. And then I use this uh, die 4 line. Uh, I can also use this bigger one, uh, but then you can also use sort of die 5, die 6 as uh, or a heavier line. Yeah. But if you want to use these really small booby flies, which I call micro boobies, micro mm. boobies. you can yeah. use intermediate <laughs> or just a floating line with um, uh, fast sinking leader. Okay. Uh, because if you have too, too heavy line, this fly will continue to sink as you fish. You don't get the hoover effect, okay. if you know what I mean. So, so, so the intermediate line would be enough for the smaller ones. Yes, yes, that definitely. could be quite ideal for the coast. I'm, yeah. I'm really seeing some potential here for, for not only using this for for rainbow trouts, but, but I see a lot of applications. You, you mentioned uh, perch as yes, well. Yes, perfect but, for perch. Yeah, yeah, but also for the uh, for the coastal sea trout. Yes. Yes. I think this is there is a lot of potential here yeah. because the way these fly move these flies move in the water is just out of this world due to the uh, to the two eyes here the actual fly it, it first of all it moves a lot of water so it affects a lot of the sideline yes. on the fish but uh, but secondly uh, because it has this uh, this profile here in front it moves really erratic in the water it yeah. just it just swims yes, just it does. absolutely amazing yeah. Um, and uh, and and uh, you told me that one of the tricks to accomplish that, especially, was to cut the eyes off in different lengths. Yes, I I've, I've noticed that because when I first started with these booby flies, I tried to make them perfect round, yeah. but I don't bother too too much because if they are not even, you got a bigger movement in the side when you pull the fly. Yeah, exactly. So so I don't always do it, but I mean it doesn't it doesn't matter if they're different. No, this is a no exactly, but this is a bit different, and I could really see how yes. that panned out, how that that just looked really exciting. Oh in the yeah, water. it does, it does. So the, you have a couple of different sizes, yes. and uh, and also a couple of different colors, right? Yes, because I mean, you can tie this fly in in every color you want, but of course, I use a lot of the white because white is the, the color you can see most in the water. Yeah, and, and white also is one of my favorite, especially for, for, uh, for rainbows. Yes, it is. And I, I use this with a combination of, of uh, chartreuse or, or lime, because we have quite clear water in some of these lakes, and, and the combination with the, the chartreuse and white shows really nice. And my second choice is this one, which I call coral, uh, which works when this one is not working, this probably will, but also when the water is a bit more colored, then we okay. go to this one. And uh, this uh, bright orange is super when it's cold, and especially if you have a really heavy uh, colored water. And of course, 
you need a black or a dark one for, for the evening. Yeah, a famous fisherman once said that the color of the fly doesn't matter as long as it's black. That's true. And black is just yeah, yeah. overall just Oh a yeah, great, it, great is, color. it is. You had a small olive one before. Yes, I think I dropped it here. Yeah, you dropped it. Yeah. Oh, now you dropped the olive. Ah, yeah. Too many flies. <laughs> Too because windy. that was quite intriguing as well. Yeah, this is another technique you can use the booby flies for. I mean, you don't only need to use these uh, you can, uh, this bright colored lure flies. You can also imitate insects. This is a damsel nymph, yeah. which I use for, well, some of the lakes are really heavy with damsels in, in late May, June. And then I use this one uh, with an intermediate or uh, a sinking line, a fast sinking line in shallow water, because then you let the line sink down and just carefully pull down the nymph to move slowly. Yeah, and this will completely imitate how how these damsels will, you know, when when the nymphs will swim up in the water to uh, to hatch actually. Yes. So you can you can basically you can you can just cast it out. I, I, I'm not talking from experience, but just from what I think here. And then you could probably in shallow water let it just hang there. Yes. And it will be yes. picked up. Yeah. Uh, I wish I had had some of these in particular in a lake I fished in New Zealand once, where the fish was just so so insanely tricky. And I think that would have done the, the yeah. job for sure. It's a nice nice looking small olive fly and you can yeah this is done with the uh, with uh, this is squirrel, uh, squirrel sunker. Sunker. Yeah. yeah you could use marabou yeah, of course well. of course so that's that, that yeah. super one for so it hatching. does not only have to be a technique you use with these um, a bit a bit uh, yeah lure like flies you can use them in with uh, imitations yes as well. that's, that's all, always a possibility so the main the main thing to, to th consider regarding this is you need the sinking line. The fly fishes differently. It, it, it comes from, from, you know, from, from higher than the line and then you pull it down and then it swims back up. So it's, it's a completely different technique. And if you're fishing water uh, where this technique that has been fished a lot, where this technique has not been used, I could foresee that, that you're doing something completely different yes, that will yes. trigger the fish yeah. that could be quite tricky otherwise. Yes, it is, it is. So, And you also need to, to uh, locate the fish when you're fishing. Uh, ah, yeah. That's another thing you can do with this sinking line, because when you start fishing, you cast out the fly, and then I count to 10, uh, where I let the, the fly uh, line sink and then I start to retrieve and I do one or two more casts. Uh, if nothing happens, I, I cast out and count to 15 and then 20 until I find the fish or the bottom. Uh, and then you can also um, variate the retrieve. Yeah. The normal thing is to short uh, distinct pulls. Yes, but you can also have a, s a slow uh, figure of eight yeah, retrieve, yeah. a nymph, nymph retrieve. Yes. retrieve. But you can also do a really long, quick pulls. You need to vary it to find the fish. Yeah. As you said to me before, which is something I, I try to do in all my fishing, but, but you said it really, really uh, eloquent. You said um, you should fish the fly always as if you know there is a fish that yes, follows your yes, fly. Yes, of course. Because if you always have that mindset that there is a fish following your fly, you're going to be more aware, you're going to be more on, you're going to be, you're, and, and you're naturally going to gonna change things up and, and variate what you do. Yes, because yes. variation is key to, uh, to, to finding the fish and to, to making the fish grab the fly. That's of course, right. sometimes you can just cast and then you'll hook some, but on most days, Spice things up a bit. Try different things until you you hit that. that you, you start hitting the fish. That's the secret, I think. Yeah. yeah. And I really like the the idea that you can you can you can you can control exactly what depth you're fishing by just counting. It's not something I've I've I've, I've not done before, and um, but maybe it's also because the lakes here are quite deep. But but that really makes a lot of sense, I think. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the fish are out there. I mean, the yeah. the, the thing is to find them. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. I think that's our cue. I think we should go find I some fish now. I think we should do that. <laughs> yeah. Yes. So just entered the water after we had some lunch and uh, taken four casts or so. Had one fish that followed and, and just did not completely take the fly just to strike and then in the in the following cast I think maybe that fish or another fish just to grab the fly a nice nice rainbow on the uh, on the booby here so we saw some fish rise out here as well <laughs> yeah. 
uh, success. So now I'm going to tie a simple booby fly <clears throat> and I use this A-Rex hook, the Freshwater 504 size 8, which is a light dry fly hook with a short shank, which is super for this type of fly. And to secure and, and make this foam cylinder set on the fly, even if you fish a lot with it, I, I stick the, the hook through the foam cylinder and I start by adding some super glue onto the hook shank because I want to secure the thread. This is a GSP thread, which is a good thread to use when you tie in the foam, but you need to get it to stick to the hook shank. So that's the reason for the super, super glue. And then we add some more super glue to secure the foam. Just pull the cylinder to, towards the hook eye and then just make a simple figure of eight or cross winding the thread. And there you have set the foam and the booby eye. Uh, and now for the rest of the fly, the tail is marabou. For this one I'm using uh, white. So we just cut off some fibers. But don't take too much because sometimes if you tie in too much marabou, the fibers seem to stick together and don't move as much as you want in the water. So I don't tie in too much marabou. And I don't want the tail to be too long. This is a bit too long for me. So then we just nip it off with your fingers. That's a better length. And the body is made of crystal chenille or cactus chenille. This is uh, chartreuse, fluo chartreuse or fluo green, which is a great combination for, well, most of the times, especially if you're fishing as I do in, in, in clear water. We just cover the shank with a chenille. And tie in. And just cut off. And now we just finish the fly with a whip finish. And there we have the perfect booby fly, just add water. This is the fly that Hook had just tied here uh, at the, at the, at, on the bank. And, uh, and he talked so much about this color, so I, I changed from the coral one to this one. And it panned out just about, I don't know, 15 casts or so, then the first fish took it. So I think this is the pattern for the day. The, uh, the, the white booby with the, uh, with the chartreuse uh, body. More to come. I, I can feel there's more fish in this fly. <laughs> We've just uh, walked into the water to start fishing, and uh, this is one of the hot spots. It's 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 in a small uh, one of the small bays in the lake here, and uh, and I'd like to talk a little more about the actual way you you fish the fly. Yes, uh, I mean <clears throat> when you cast out cast out the line, 
Uh, the first thing I do is that I let the flying, uh, line sink. So I start to count, as I said before, start to count to 10. And then you re retrieve the fly and then you do two or three casts more, count to 10. And if you don't feel anything, then you start to count to 15 and do a couple of casts and you continue until you find a fish or you hit the bottom. Okay. Uh, in that way, you always know where you fish to fly and where the fish are. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So you can variate the depths quite easily, yes. and, and once you locate uh, the, uh, the, 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 the water level where the fish are, you'll know exactly yes. how to do it for the rest of the day. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, if, if the fish start uh, stop taking at that depth, you just let it sink a bit more or just yeah. leave it uh, in the surface. I mean, yeah. you can always find the fish by doing this. You also talked a lot about the different uh, types of retrieve, Håkon. Yes. And, uh, and maybe, maybe that a demonstration would be nice. So you said that in order to get the fly to fish really well, I had to do some... One of the, the best ways was to make really short but very distinctive yes. strips. So, so like this? Yes. You get well marked uh, deeping, uh, diving from the fly. Yeah. And then you just make the pause so the fly will uh, float up again and then you just pull it down so again. So it dives fast down yes. and then it flutters, you know, it, it yes. uh, and rises in, in the water Yeah, column. exactly. And as, as I said before, you need to vary the, the speed and the length of the retrieve as well, just to, to provoke the fish if there is out there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, another thing was, uh, you said you could also fish this in a, in a, in a uniform uh, tempo. Yes. With the, the nymphing, you know, where, you, where you, you take the line between the fingers and then you pull it like this. Yes. This will give a completely even Yes, I mean, the, the, the fly will move uh, in smaller diving, but it, you have a steady retrieve of the fly. Yeah. So that's a different way to do it as well. And in this way, you can, you can also make the retrieve really slow if ah, it's yeah. cold in the water, for example. Yeah. So is there a general rule if, if you, I know that things can vary, but, but uh, I find that, that uh, on general, then the colder the water, the slower the retrieve. That's true. And I mean, that's, that's one of the, the benefit with this type of fishing, because when it's really, really cold, I mean, you, you can actually leave the fly in the water just floating around oh. or hoover, as we said before. Yeah. Uh, and that's something you can't do with the sinking fly because oh. it will continue to sink when you, when you make a pause. So, so really slow in cold water and, and maybe add a bigger fly. Ah, okay. A bigger booby and slow retrieve that could be, do the trick. <laughs> Slow but bigger boobs. <laughs> yeah, that's the way to do it. <laughs> that's the way to do it, okay. I'm sorry if I, yeah. One of the rules should be today, do not make the obvious joke, but uh, no. I, for some reason I, I... We call it eyes today. Yeah, well, let's call it eyes. Yeah. Bigger eyes, yeah, yeah definitely. Bigger eyes. Yeah. Bigger eyes. Yeah. And you also said that every now and then, you know, to make this really long, slow retrieve, but perhaps with, with you know, a bit of acceleration at the yes. end to make it again move down and then yes yes i think the extra kick is is uh, essential sometimes to provoke the fish as well so so uh, i mean fish to fly as if there are fish after the fly yeah uh, and and uh, i i always not always but often find that the fish take the fly in the pause ah. so you often hook the fly when you make the retrieve afterwards and Oh, so, so they, they, they take the fly while it's, it's you know, it's, yes, it's, going it's up. fluttering yes. up, up and then the next retrieve will automatically will hook, hook the yes. fish. Yes. Oh, yeah. yeah. And, and of course, this is, uh, this is something you can, <coughs> you can apply all of these techniques in the same cast, if you like, That's to, true. Really, to really spice up yeah. things. Yeah, yeah. So, so you can start by making the short strips, and then perhaps do a bit of this, yes. then a longer one, two, three longer ones, then the small short yeah. ones again. Yeah. Yeah. So you vary it all the way yeah. through, uh, through each cast. Yeah, of course. Uh, that's especially when the, the fish is tricky. Yeah. I mean, often if the fish are on biting, I mean, you can just use the short retrieve and they will take the fly. But if they are tricky, then you need to variate and, and bo both the depth and the retrieve. Yeah. yeah, okay. Yeah, you have to, you know, do a lot of different things to, to trigger the specific fish of, of uh, in the specific conditions of the day. Exactly. There is exactly. there's no one thing, one sure thing in fishing. No, no. If it doesn't work, do something else. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 
And also, I think these uh, these these sinking lines they cast really really easily. It's it's uh, because they have no air bubbles in them, like the floating floating lines. They are more um, they are less dense in the air, so there is less uh, um, uh, resistance when when you cast. So it's it's yeah. fairly easy to just chug it out there. Uh, I mean, you do not have to cast all the line, but no. just get no. it you know get it out there, and uh, it, it's it it, uh, it it feels really really nice to to fish this line. It's, and you it's need easy to remember. Sorry, you need to remember when you using the sinking line if you make a, uh, a bad cast or something if you have a floating air you can just lift the line and make a new cast but yeah. now you left the line sinking then you need to retrieve all the line if you're making a new cast otherwise you you maybe break your rod yeah yeah because the line is so far down yes. in the water column it's it's it can sometimes be more than one roll cast to actually get it to the surface that's true so when i retrieve this uh, when I fish, uh, I normally pull it so there is maybe three or four meters out and then I just make one roll cast just to get everything on top. Just one roll cast yes. to force the line up and then I can pick up my line, and cast. do a back cast and then that's the way. send it out there. Yeah, that's true. Yep. And Super. then it's just switch up things, fish, 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 fish. Provoke, provoke, <laughs> until the fish are there. Yeah. yeah. Well, I think I'm getting the hang of this, Hogan. Just practice. Yeah, 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 yeah. Just fish, fish, fish. The best way to get uh, to get to be good at something is to do it. So that's that's true. Yeah. 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 So, so just go out there and do it. And you'll catch some fish on the yeah along the way. I think we will. Yeah, we will. Just entered the water after we had some lunch and uh, taken four casts or so. Had one fish that followed and, and just did not completely take the fly, just a strike. And then in the in the following cast, I think maybe that fish or another fish just to grab the fly. A nice, nice rainbow on the uh, on the booby here. So we saw some fish rise out here as well. <laughs> yeah, success. Just switched to a dry fly here in the last light. There is a couple of really nice fish that are head and tailing and, uh, and and feeding on the surface out here. The water is completely dead and calm, but they're just just out of my reach. So I've just put my dry fly out there. Oh, there was one another, another one. Um, and hopefully they will they will get a bit closer and see my dry fly. You know, just gonna leave it there. <laughs> Thank you. 
Well, we've had a really, really good day today. I think we caught seven or eight fish today. Yeah, something like that. Something like that. Mostly you. <laughs> I think I fished a bit more intense than you did. Well, you did, yeah. Yeah, I casted more times than you, than you did. Definitely. Yeah, yeah. But I think you learned something new. Yeah, definitely, definitely. And uh, this booby technique um, is, is it really makes the fly look so, uh, so alive in the water and it, it, it just opens up a lot of new options. It does. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take that home with me and, uh, and apply that to a lot of other different types of fishing, I think. It's a, it's a really, really unique technique. It is, I mean, and it, it's a good, um, how shall we say, if it doesn't work on a floating line, use the sinking line. Yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly. And, and highly efficient as well. So, overall, a very nice and successful day. It was truly a pleasure fishing with well, you. My Welcome pleasure to, to have you here. <laughs> and showing me around and stuff. And that steak was nice as well. <laughs> well it was, yeah. It was a good meal. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so um, we're signing off now. Um, thank you so much for watching. Um, and of course, remember to swing by Nordic Anglers if you're ever in need of any uh, fly tying or fly fishing equipment. Um, and remember so to subscribe to the channel as well. That would mean a lot to us. So thank you for watching. And uh, as always, good luck out on the water. <laughs>